at sundown on the 30th of October, 1879, the fearless frogman arrived at this spot and announced that the next morning he would go into a rolling mass of water right down here and live to tell about it. Now, at that time, the water was coming down here, through here, and it filled this entire gorge. These are the falls at Bellows Falls, Vermont. The fearless frogman was the name the newspaper had given, Captain Paul Boynton. Captain Boynton was a 31-year-old, and he had obtained his rank in the Navy during the American Civil War. After the war, he had experimented with submarine diving for the Mexican government. He'd also served in the Franco-Prussian War and had worked in the diamond mines in South Africa. Later, he would become a commander of torpedo services in Peru. He was captured by the Chileans, or Chileans, depending on your pronunciation, and he escaped. But his greatest notoriety came because he was the owner of a rubber suit, which he had invented. The suit was unique. It buoyed him up like an inflatable raft. In this rubber suit, he had crossed the English Channel. He had leaped from a ship off the coast of Ireland in the middle of a gale and had successfully paddled himself to the coast some 40 miles. He descended the Danube in the suit and the Mississippi in the suit, and he had crossed the Straits of Gibraltar. And now he would attempt shooting the most dangerous rapids on the Connecticut River. Well, word traveled fast, and the next morning, 2,000 people were gathered around here, mostly on the New Hampshire side. And Captain Boynton, he floated down the river told, toward this maelstrom, and suddenly it sucked him in like a goldfish being flushed down the toilet. More than a minute went by. There was no sight of the man. He was way down. Everybody was looking, and then a cheer went up as the rubber suit buoyed up to the service, and way, way down the river it was. The man waved. He was alive. Later, he said he had actually hit the riverbed at the foot of the falls, and he thought he would not surface. He said he thought he would die. Later in his life, the good captain would make money recounting his adventures in the theater in England, and for many years he was an attraction at Coney Island in New York. He died, by the way, in 1924 in New York City at the age of 76.